Um, Amravati project, something that I know the Honorable Prime Minister's, Minister's Chief Minister is very, very passionate about. Um, it could be, in, or should be, India's first ground up AI capital full of technology built on uh, the best plans, sustainable, everything that we can dream of. So if you could tell us a little bit about the vision behind the Amravati project, also called Amravati.ai, which is a very interesting um, subtitle for a, for a capital city. How is it going and what is the vision? Uh, because investors would really like to understand that um, um, you know, it will be a state, a, a capital that will compete with several very important capitals in the South. With other capitals in the world. We're going to compete with other capitals in the world right. and that's our aspiration as a state. So, as a state, we got bifurcated in the year 2014. So, we are the new state, capital estate. We started our journey from scratch. And Mr. Naidu is known for building cities ground up. An example of that is Cyberabad. So, Hyderabad was built by the Nizam, Sikandarabad by the British, and Cyberabad by Mr. Naidu. He has a great contribution in that. So, he's known for it. And he, he brought the same vision, but he said, let's do this from scratch and a completely green field. And the beauty of this project is not just the technology bit, but the human angle, where not even an acre was owned by the government, it was owned by the farmers. So we pooled the land from the farmers, where developed land went back to the farmers. So how do you make farmers part of this growth, the economic growth that we're going to deliver? So and that's very unique uh, in that sense. And we started off with that project. It is going to be India's world-class city. It's going to be all green powered. It's a city that's going to have district cooling system, like how we have power, water coming, and gas coming home, you'll actually have air conditioning coming as service. So we're looking at various efficient models that have been deployed across the world that can enable us to leapfrog as a city. That's one part. The second part comes to the entire knowledge bit. If you look at it, we already have India's premier institutes like SRM, VIT, already having campuses there, and they're creating world-class students, faculty coming out of that area, and more campuses are going to come. So that's where the entire knowledge economy is going to get kick-started. And saying that, as a government, we are very passionate about real-time governance. We did this in the past, between 14 and 19. But now things have changed. Now government can be in your phone. So why should you go to office? And single question is that. So when you push a button, you're able to watch a movie. When you push a button, you're able to get a cab, or groceries, or lunch, or dinner. Why can't government be that responsive? And that's a straight question that I get, I get asked by the Honorable Chief Minister. Saying that, phase one, we're working with various platforms, uh, and the phase one, we intend to deliver about close to 100 government services via any platform to your phone, number one. Number two, we want to use AI, and we are in talks, we are actually piloting it, and there are amazing examples of how AI can sort of uh, improve the uh, efficiency of government delivery, and the various instances where I believe we could have done much better than we did in the past. So you'll see in the next 100 days, uh, AI being uh, deployed in governance and also helping uh, ministers, bureaucrats take decisions. So we have, we already started this project where, where we have a digital twin for every minister. Hmm. And based on the entire social listening, based on the feedback from various sources, it would advise that these are probably the five areas you want to pay attention in this week. So we're giving these insights to the ministers and then we have this entire feedback mechanism, we understand sentiment across various ministries far better today. So 100 days from now, I think I'll be able to present it actually in front of everyone. And then we want to then go down, have a digital twin for every member of legislative assembly so they can understand better what are the pain points, what are the things that we need to now focus on.